This video covers D3 and JavaScript dates and times. The structure of this video is as follows. JavaScript objects revisited. JavaScript date object. D3 time formatting and the summary. All right, let's get started. JavaScript objects revisited. JavaScript objects are a collection of methods and properties. A method is a function that is a member of an object. A property is a value or set of values that is a member of an object. The world of objects in JavaScript is a deep one. The part of the world that we want to look at is object literals. Object literal JavaScript object creation is used when you only want to create one instance of an object. For a very large part of the D3 work that we will do together, we will only ever want to create one instance of an object. This is an object literal JavaScript object. With the curly brackets, we assign values to specific keys. In this case, 20 is assigned to top, 20 is assigned to right, 30 is assigned to bottom, and 50 is assigned to left. By creating an object, we can access its properties. We can access it by the way on the left or by the way on the right. By defining the margin object like this, we have a ready-made JavaScript object ready to go. This is the object literal JavaScript object way of defining objects. Another way to define objects is to construct them using a JavaScript built-in construct. The object constructor creates a new object wrapper for the given value. If the value is null or undefined, it will create and return an empty object. Otherwise, it will return an object of a type that corresponds to the given value. It is an anti-pattern in that it is not the preferred pattern to construct objects. It is not the preferred pattern for two reasons. One, object literal construction is easier to type and read as it's done in one statement. Two, object literal construction emphasizes objects are simply associative arrays. JavaScript date object. One of the few times when we do use an object constructor in JavaScript is when defining JavaScript date objects. JavaScript date objects enable basic storage and retrieval of dates and times. JavaScript date objects can only be instantiated by calling JavaScript date as a constructor with the word new. Calling it as a regular function without the new operator will return a string rather than a date object. The JavaScript date object can be created with several different parameters. If you do not pass in any parameters, then the date gets set to today's date and time according to local time. If you pass in a value, it is the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970, 0 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, UTC, which is the coordinated universal time. If you pass in a date string, it will convert it to a date object for you. If you pass in numbers separated by commas, it will assume that you are doing the last construction. For every number you don't pass in, it will assume a zero. For the year, make sure to pass in a four-year number. One important gotcha to pay attention to is that the month is zero-based. Make sure you keep this in mind and it will help prevent off-by-one errors. The other important gotcha to pay attention to is that the time zone is UTC. This can cause an issue when you are very near midnight and your time zone is far enough away from UTC that it can cause a difference of dates. These are all of the methods available to the JavaScript date object, quite a few of them. There are many ways to get certain parts of the date and times. There are also many ways to set certain parts of the date and times. One set of things that are not present, however, are ways to format dates and times. Luckily, the D3 library comes with time formatting built into it. D3 time formatting. D3 includes a helper module for parsing and formatting dates modeled after the STRP time and STRF time C library standards. If you've used Python's time module before, you'll be familiar with these. Otherwise, the D3 API documentation has a full write-up. There are 23 different types of formatting specifiers available as of the recording of this video. They range from things like abbreviated weekday name, full weekday name, abbreviated month name, to things like week number of the year as a decimal number, with Sunday as the first day of the week. This is the way to use the D3 helper module for formatting dates. First, Define the type of formatting you want, 
then you pass in the date that you want formatted. Let's take a look in the JavaScript console at some of the D3 time formatting. First, let's define the date future variable as a date in the future. This date is January 12th, 2020. Next, let's call it to see what it returns. You can see that it set the date in the future. Also, notice that it is using my time zone, EST. Also, notice that the time in hours, minutes, and seconds has been set to zero. Next, let's check what type of JavaScript thing it is. JavaScript tells us it is an object. We can see what properties and methods it has available by placing a period after the name and waiting for the JavaScript console to provide a drop-down list. In addition to the getter and setter methods, you can see the constructor method. After that are the get and set methods to get and set specific parts of the time and date. We try one to see how it works. Notice that we use the open and close parentheses after the method name to call the method. This returns 2020 just as we would expect. Now that we have the JavaScript date time object, let's see what kind of formatting we can do with D3. We type in the date future variable again so that we can see what we are starting with. The date returned is a Sunday. Let's use D3 to get the full day name. This returns Sunday, which is what we wanted from the D3 time formatter. Let's now get the full month name using D3. This returns January, which is expected as when we built the date future variable, we passed in a zero for January. Next, let's see what number of month D3 returns when we ask for the month number. This returned the string zero one. Two things to notice here. One, the string has a leading zero. Two, January shows up as the month number one. Two is important to pay attention to because when we build JavaScript date objects, January is month number zero. So you want to make sure you are paying close attention to whether you are using a JavaScript or D3 date to do things that require actual month numbers. D3 can even tell us whether it is an AM or PM time in the local time zone. This returns AM. When the variable date future was defined, we did not give it an hour, minute, or second. Since the JavaScript date object constructor sets zero to all the arguments that are not passed in, the date future date object got set with zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Basically, exactly midnight on January 12th, 2020. And that covers some of the basic date time formatting that can be applied using D3 to JavaScript date objects. This comes in very handy when doing data visualizations of time series or events related to time, especially when we construct axes for charts and one of the axes contains times or dates or both. The summary. This video covered JavaScript objects revisited, JavaScript date object, D3 time formatting, and the summary.